Hi everyone, welcome to Sea Airspace 2023 just outside Washington DC. I'm very glad that I'm joined this afternoon by Rear Admiral Steve Tedford, the head of PEO Unmanned Aviation and Strike Weapons. Admiral, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you please first uh, tell us a little bit about your role at the head of uh, PEO UNW? Certainly. So PEO uh, UNW stands for Unmanned Aviation and Strike Weapons. Uh, we are compiled of approximately nine program offices that cover both of those two halves of the portfolio. Everything from our strike weapons, dumb bombs, uh, tactically start weapons, including tactical tomahawk. And then on the unmanned, it's everything from very small handheld UAVs up through the large MQ-4 Triton, as well as our targets uh, branch that does all of our subsonic and supersonic targets for test, as well as our ship self-defense testing. It's approximately 1,500 uh, uh, military and civilian employees. We're headquartered at uh, Patuxent River Naval Air Station. Oh, very well. Uh, I wanted to discuss with you a little bit about uh, some of your uh, strike weapon programs, uh, starting with uh, LORASM, the long-range anti-ship missile. What's the current status of this program? Thank you. Great question. So LORASM, the, the first version of LORASM is already in the field. Uh, it's also continuing in its production. Um, the next version will be the, the LRASM 1.1, which is bringing additional in-flight target capability into that weapon. And then the, the final variant, or the next variant after that, which we call C3, is, our, is an extended range variant that we're looking to bring into IOC in the next uh, three to four years. And what new capabilities does uh, LRASM bring compared to legacy missiles such as Harpoon? Well, it brings uh, a much longer range um, that we're capable of. Uh, it also brings a, a sizable improvement in lethality, um, and it also gives us the ability to uh, target in the uh, surface world specific uh, strike groups and or specific ships uh, based on the technology and the weapon. So far, it's, uh, it has reached, uh, I believe, EOC with both, or IOC with uh, both uh, the BF-1B of the Air Force and the F-18 Super Hornet of the U.S. Navy. Are there any other platforms uh, in the pipe? Not at the moment. Um, so yes, you're right. B1 and the F-18 for the Navy. Um, we are investigating opportunities to, to put uh, LRASM on other platforms uh, in the service, but those decisions uh, are not final yet, and we're, we're waiting to see what is the best complement that will support the combatant commander. Another uh, very burning topic is uh, HALO, because we just awarded uh, two contracts last week. Can you, can you tell us more? Certainly. So HALO is our hypersonic anti-surface warfare OSW increment 2. Um, hypersonic is a slight misnomer because although hypersonic typically means higher than Mach 5, we're more concerned about closing long range at time. If it achieves at Mach 5, that's fine, but that's not a critical KPP that we're going after. The challenge here is being able to do a hypersonic strike that's launched off of an F-18 coming from an aircraft carrier. So to date, we've done a lot of advances with the Air Force and DARPA um, that have taken hypersonics, whether it's scramjet or ramjet technology, and what we've learned about how to get into that, that space for hypersonics, but it's all been very large missiles because of the boosting capability you need to get up and into the hypersonic realm. When you want to do that on an aircraft carrier, you've got limits on how long it can be just to be on the elevators uh, and move around the flight deck. And of course, there's a limit on, on what can be carried on the F-18 itself for both catapult and a recovery. So that becomes the technological challenge. It's not the hypersonics itself. It's how can you package it into a weapon form that will fit on the F-18. This program, the award that we just gave to Lockheed Martin Raytheon is phase one, and it'll take both of those companies through a preliminary design review competition that's uh, right now scheduled to run until December of 24. Another uh, strike weapons in in your portfolio is the uh, Tomahawk. The, the latest variant known as Block 5 will be able to strike uh, moving targets at sea. Can you tell us more? Sure. So, and that's correct. So Block 5 uh, Tomahawk, it's actually the Block 5 Alpha, which is the Maritime Strike Tomahawk, which is a, a uh, change in the kit that we put onto a, uh, a Block 5 weapon. Um, so the Maritime Strike is not an all-up round itself, but it does give us the equivalent lethality of a land strike in the anti-surface warfare world and with the ability to specifically target uh, surface ships. And that is gonna be, uh, we're, we're doing demonstration this summer uh, and that will be uh, intended to IOC in the 25, 26 timeframe. 
uh, with full rate production to follow. Uh, so far, the only user of Tomahawk outside of the US is the UK Royal Navy, but uh, I believe uh, Australia and Japan may be next. That's correct in that, yes, UK, uh, we do all of their, they have Block 4s and we're doing the recertification of the UK now. That is our, our existing signed case. But we do have quite a bit of interest from Australia and Japan, uh, as well as some other uh, partner nations. Um, that's still in development uh, and it's still a little pre-decisional, but yes, we are seeing some expansion in the desire to have uh, Tomahawk in the land strike variant uh, with our partner allies. Actually, and not to catch you off guard, but I believe uh, today uh, the Dutch parliament uh, greenlighted the procurement of uh, Tomahawk for their LCF class ships and uh, future submarine, uh, submarine program, but uh, I'll, I'll check uh, on that. Uh, last uh, but not least, uh, very iconic missile, Harpoon. Yes. What, what's the future of that uh, very known missile in the U.S. Navy fleet? Harpoon, as you know, has been around for 30 plus years. It's the weapon when I first came in, in P3s, it was our, our anti-surface warfare weapon of choice. Um, it's been around a very long time. We have uh, quite a bit of FMS customers that are interested in Harpoon as well as the SLAM ER. For the, for the U.S. Navy, um, we are continuing to develop and expand the air-launched version of Harpoon, which we'll call Harpoon Block 2 Plus. Um, as the surface fleet phases out of Harpoon, surface-launched Harpoon, and they change over to uh, Navy Standard Missile, ESSM, and other surface strike weapons in the surface world. Um, but we're continuing the development of Harpoon because we have quite a few FMS customers. It is a, it's a reliable, it's an effective weapon. It's, it's uh, available at a, at a low cost, price, cost point, which makes it very appealing uh, to a lot of our partners and allies. Very well, Admiral. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.